You saw the uh, spacecraft roll there. Perhaps you noticed it. They, in flight, uh, in the powered phase of flight, are flying head down. Uh, and as soon as they get separation, they roll the vehicle, so they're now flying heads up. Although it doesn't really make any difference in that weightless state uh, in which they now find themselves, whether they're flying head down or head up, it's just a little more convenient, perhaps, for the maneuvering of the spacecraft. It's the zero position, zero pitch, zero yaw, Six zero roll. 11 and a half seconds in leaving the vehicle. Shiraz now calling out his incremental velocity indicator readings. And uh, guidance officer Charlie Parker stands and gives a big OK signal with his right hand. Obviously, there's exultation in mission control. You can tell it in Paul Haney's voice and in what he's describing down there. And you even heard a cheer. I've never heard that before a leak out over his, uh, uh, his microphone as he sits in the back of the mission control center right behind the flight director, Chris Kraft. This on our Coleman map shows approximately what is happening there at this the moment. This is Houston. We have an initial orbit of 87 by 141. This is being relayed up to 6 right now. 87 by 141. And as the man said, you can't come any closer than that. That's right on the target. That's we have now the uh, launch tape, which we will start at T-minus 90 seconds, carry you through the powered phase of flight. Gemini Network, this is Houston Network. We have picked up the count. We're at T minus 2 minutes, 35 seconds on my mark. Mark. Okay, guys, light off. Launch vehicle is transferring to internal power, minus 130. Stand by for engine kibbling in 5 seconds. It's 120. Minus 1 minute. That's my mark, 20 seconds. Mark. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Lift off. Pressure, Gemini 6. Six, you are go. 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 Go.
of that orbit, that means that they're in a 100 by 165 statute mile orbit, and that's uh, almost precisely on the money. 100 miles uh, was exactly the uh, apogee uh, that they wanted, the, uh, and 165, 168 miles was the high point. Now, about uh, one hour and 35 minutes into the flight, and just about the end of the first orbit, as the spacecraft is over New Orleans, Shira will do just a little bit of correcting to make that orbit exactly 168, 100 by 168. And it's not going to take very much correction to do that, about, oh, one foot uh, per second of the thrust, as uh, they call it, or just a change of speed around two-thirds of a mile per hour. That's at the apogee. Uh, they fire at the apogee to raise the perigee, the perigee, uh, and that, that, that will make this correction to the 100, 165, uh, 168 mile orbit. Uh, the astronauts uh, are now around uh, 1,200 miles uh, behind uh, the Gemini 7 and considerably lower than Gemini 7 as uh, they both approach the west coast of Africa. The next important function uh, for uh, Gemini uh, 6 now is to get its go, no-go from Hawaii for at least 15 orbits. In other words, uh, the word that uh, they're that everything uh, aboard the spacecraft and uh, in its uh, orbital relationship is such that it can remain aloft for at least one day until tomorrow morning. There doesn't seem any question, unless there are some difficulties aboard the spacecraft in the next uh, hour, uh, that uh, they will get that go for at least one day. And then their first maneuver comes over at New Orleans uh, at uh, approximately, oh, what will it be now, 10 minutes after 10? Uh, they will raise that perigee just a bit for a 168 to 100 mile orbit. Their next uh, major maneuver would then come at about 10.55 in the morning, midway over the Indian Ocean, when on the second orbit, Shira will make the first major maneuver. He'll fire his aft rockets for some, oh, with some 53 foot, uh, uh, feet per second, that's 36 uh, and a third miles per hour. Uh, that's a 
posigrade maneuver, in other words, a forward maneuver to raise his perigee from that 100 mile uh, low point to 134 miles. He makes a second mid-course correction to finally bring his spacecraft into the same orbit, uh, but 15 miles below the orbit of Gemini 7, and then finally the terminal or closing maneuver around 2.30 p.m. our time. And certainly the way things are going now, it looks like a perfect mission is on its way, that they'll be able to carry out those maneuvers as planned. The only mention of any difficulty at all, a very minor one, as you heard, he said that he had some haze on his window. This has been noticed in uh, most of the Gemini flights, uh, some uh, hazing over the window, and the theory at the moment, although it's only theory, is that maybe it is uh, the salt air at Cape Kennedy that collects on the window at takeoff, and despite the great acceleration of the spacecraft through the atmosphere seems to cling there. That may be what do, what's doing it, but the scientists at Houston and the Cape admit they're not sure. Uh, they're having the same trouble with Gemini 7, incidentally. CBS News color coverage of Gemini 6 and Gemini 7 will continue in a moment. Some uh, varying degree below, but uh, around 85 miles below uh, Gemini 7. Uh, it is catching up at a rapid rate, orbital mechanics uh, being such that the lower orbit is a faster orbit, of course, around the Earth, just like the inside track of a race course, and they're beginning to catch up even now with Gemini 7. Gemini 7 was about 270 miles downrange when Gemini 6 uh, was launched uh, just uh, 20 minutes ago, and we have not had word that Frank Borman and Jim Lovell saw the launch of Gemini 6. We're waiting to see if they did. They might just possibly have, but that is a rather great uh, range for them to have seen it. They did see, you know, the first burst of the rocket engines uh, on last Sunday, but now they have the word that Gemini 6 is go. And those were, uh, that's a wonderful and probably historic space quote from Wally Shira. Uh, his words were, we have a big fat go from us it looks great. A big fat go for Gemini 6 now toward a big fat rendezvous. It's hoped at around 2.30 this afternoon. Bill Stout and Bob Sharp uh, out there at uh, St. Louis, the McDonnell Aircraft Plant, who uh, I assume are just as elated as all the rest of us at this successful flight so far, are going to give us some information, I gather, uh, Bob, uh, Bill, on uh, these initial orbital maneuvers Gemini 6 will be performing. I'm sure, Walter, that uh, in this full-scale duplicate with all the switches and dials, instruments, gauges, and so forth, that Bob can give us some idea of exactly what they have to do in these early minutes of the flight, aside from watching and worrying and, and being delighted, Bob. What would Wally Shira and command pilot seat have done, for instance, when they talk about rolling the spacecraft over so that they're sitting up instead of sitting down, facing oh. down? Uh, of course, at insertion, they are uh, laying on their side. That is, if my thumb is uh, out here, as their head, they're laying on their side, they separate and roll up. And doing this procedure, they turn on their uh, uh, ohms or their attitude control system power, unstow their maneuver controller, then they proceed to uh, jettison their fairing, and then fire the separate spacecraft uh, techniques and start thrusting it, which at that time their IVI counts down. It sees 10 foot per second on it, and it counts down slowly until it gets to zero, and then they finish thrusting. Uh, during this uh, process, they also start rolling to a heads-up position, since they're now separated from the booster, beginning a very slow roll, as we can see on the attitude ball here, and in this simulation. We keep talking about ohms. These are simply the small rockets and thrusters that they use to move the spacecraft around, right? Uh, yes, you can see them on the adapter. Uh, the lights on this simulation simulate the ohms thrusters firing. I notice there's very few of them firing right at this moment because it's a very simple, uh, non-complex maneuver. We'll see a lot of firing, though, when it comes to the point of moving up into the same plane as uh, Gemini 7, won't we? Uh, yes, on their attitude thrusters, uh, we'll see a fair amount of activity anytime they're controlling attitude. And of course, this initial part of the flight, uh, they'll be aligning the platform uh, at uh, frequent intervals here during the catch-up process, uh, which requires very fine corrections, uh, but, uh, which they use the thrusters in the pulse mode to give a very fine or a very real vernier type of control. 
uh, and they'll be uh, using them also uh, during the in-plane and out-of-plane maneuvers they'll make to change their phasing and adjust their orbits to uh, match the desired one. What does that mean, that kind of maneuver, in-plane, out-of-plane? Well, the uh, in-plane maneuver is one that's used to change the velocity in orbit, uh, either to speed it up or to Where slow it down and adjust the altitude of the orbit. The out-of-plane maneuvers are done at 90 degrees to their direction of flight. In other words, they'll turn the spacecraft through an angle of 90 degrees. I see. And this serves to actually then tip the plane of the orbit slightly when they uh, uh, make this maneuver. They can really move around up there as uh, the flight plan calls for later in the